station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Absolutely. We're ready. Aviation Week and Space Technology. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Good morning, station. This is Mark Corot with Aviation Week and Space Technology. How do you hear me? Hi, Mark. Uh, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. Um, I've got some questions. I know you're both busy, so I appreciate the opportunity. I wonder if the two of you could discuss what the key challenges are for this third spacewalk as it's currently planned. It seems like there's lots of cable and lots of space station real estate to deal with. That's right, Mark. Uh, we're continuing the cable theme that we had from the first two EVAs, and uh, this one we're going to lay down over 400 feet of cable. We're going to send two cables out to the left side of the station, or port side, and two to the right side, or starboard side. And uh, these cables are going to attach to some antennas that are going to be used for the future American vehicles that are going to be docking, bringing crew to the space station starting in a few years. So we need to put these antennas and the cables there for them and also some reflectors so their onboard navigation systems that use lasers can see the reflectors. And uh, that way the spaceship will know where the station is and what orientation it's in and we'll be able to dock properly. So uh, there's a lot of moving from one end to the other of the station and a lot of equipment and hardware that we're going to be bringing out there. And Terry, I'd like to ask you if, uh, if you and the experts on the ground are any closer to identifying the source of the water in your spacesuit helmet after the second spacewalk and how concerned you might be about embarking on a third spacewalk in the same spacesuit. Well, you know, uh, to be honest, I've been busy getting ready for the third uh, spacewalk, and I know a lot of specialists. I've gotten some emails and talked to folks on the ground. They're very busy analyzing the data. Uh, this is something that we've seen before, and I mentioned it yesterday when I noticed some water. I said it might be the same issue. It's happened a few times. Um, so it's something that it, it's possible that it's something that we've seen before, but that's still to be determined. And I'm sure that NASA is looking very intently at it, and they're going to have a good answer for us here shortly. Um, as far as being concerned, I'm actually pretty happy with this spacesuit. It's gotten me out the door and back in safely twice, so I kind of like it. And, and hopefully it's good, and I can keep on going out in the same one. Well, it, so it sounds like uh, if, if they can find a satisfactory answer, um, you're, you're prime. You're ready to go on this one. That's right. Yeah, Butch and I will absolutely be ready to go, and uh, it's just a question. The ground's going to make the decision for us uh, after looking at the data, and, and uh, I'm, I'm completely confident I'm not going outside unless we're sure that it's a good, shoot, good suit. Okay, and I'd like to ask the both of you, um, these, this series of three spacewalks to reconfigure the station for these commercial uh, docking ports seems, uh, you know, bigger than just the, just the work of putting the hardware in place, this is really sort of giving uh, the U.S. space program a new direction. And uh, I just wonder what the two of you think about the significance of this activity that you've undertaken. Oh, it, it's absolutely huge significance. It is, it is changing our capabilities of the International Space Station. We're preparing for the future. As we prepare for, as Terry said, for these, these U.S. vehicles to dock to the station, right now we've got the old shuttle docking adapters, uh, and they're kind of big. Those kind of docking adapters are big and heavy, and, and these smaller vehicles, there's no reason to put that kind of weight on them. So the docking adapters are different. And so we put those docking adapters on there. Like we said, they have to have power, and getting that power to them is, is our job, or working on those cables to get it to it. And this is a huge effort. Yeah, we've spent some, you know, six and a half hours on two spacewalks outside, but it has been literally years of planning, engineers, training teams, assessment teams, uh, operational teams uh, across our nation doing much in preparation for this. So this is a, this is a huge endeavor. You're absolutely right in that assessment. I wonder if, uh, if the two of you could give us a little insight in the sort of physical demands, uh, even the mental demands of doing this kind of work. Um, I, I listened yesterday to the spacewalks, and it seemed like there was an awful lot of coordination between the two of you, probably as much uh, just looking at one another as actually talking, uh, and also the sort of support that you got from uh, Samantha and also on the ground from Joe Acaba and kind of cueing you here and there to uh, to what was coming next. And I just wonder how important that sort of teamwork is to accomplishing these goals. 
Yeah, that teamwork is absolutely vital. These these goals don't get accomplished. These objectives do not happen without the work of everybody coming together. And you know, in Joe uh, talking to us, he's just the voice of many people in the background that are talking to him, and he's the conduit of, of communication to us back and forth. So there's many, many uh, people on the ground that are assessing, you know, real time, making real time changes to what's taking place. And uh, like I said, he's a, he's the, one of the prime ones. And Samantha, like you said, uh, Terry and Samantha worked together to lube the the arm yesterday and it would not have happened uh, they got all the get-aheads done and it would not have happened in our time allotted had not Samantha been exactly ready to start and do her part every single time so her part was vital as well and as far as the physical aspects I can tell you there's there's not many things that, that I think that are more mentally and physically challenging uh, simultaneously is, is doing a spacewalk like this with all the intricate details and the various things and and there's no way that at least in my brain that I can mentally put it all together and make it happen alone. Uh, that's why we need Joe and those ground teams feeding us information. Uh, sometimes where a handrail is located, something as simple as that. Uh, and it's like you said, it's absolutely crucial to the success of any endeavor like this. And what about the uh, the physicality of it? Um, I, I guess I'm really kind of wondering if, if you know, are, you, are your hands uh, in need of more rest or uh, your arms and all that, or, or can you work in the spacesuits and do all the stuff that's planned for the third spacewalk without being, um, you know, cramped or, or too sore at the end? Yeah, you are absolutely sore and uh, tired after a spacewalk. The good news is it seems like uh, your body heals a little bit quicker in space than it does on Earth. But uh, they give us a few days off, which are really important, like you said, to just to heal your forearms and your and your your hand muscles. Um, but you are tired. I've done a few marathons on Earth and half marathons, and the spacewalk is 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 definitely takes a lot of energy out of you. We were talking to the doctors yesterday just about our heart rates, and it's amazing the heart rate level and the amount of physical work you do for. Uh, the six and a half hours we were outside, plus a couple hours beforehand in the suit and about an hour afterwards in the suit. So it's a lot of uh, work. You're absolutely right about the physical aspect of a spacewalk. Okay. Let me add one thing. The uh, one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is that you know when you're out on, in the in the vacuum of space, uh, it's like literally uh, almost 300 degrees, and and the place you can feel that is right in, in our fingertips when we're on the you know on the on the, the sun side of the orbit, and that heat. Uh, you don't feel 300 degrees at your fingertips, but you feel warm. That heat combined with the fatigue inside those gloves really does wear on those fingertips for a while. When, you know, when you come back in, your fingertips are all pink and white and, and discolored and, and very, very tender. And after the first spacewalk, even your, your fingernails feel like they get peeled back a little bit. And after the first spacewalk, it took about three days before they felt really normal. And uh, I told Terry, I said, I bet you after the second one we'll feel better. And, then, and it, that is indeed the case. This morning I feel much better than I did the morning after the first one. So just just, anyway, just a little piece of information. No, that's very interesting. It, it seems very physical. Um, my last question uh, for you, uh, Butch, is I know your mission is uh, nearing an end in a couple of weeks. I just uh, wonder how you might characterize your time aboard the space station as a sort of life experience. I think one the, the first adjective that comes to mind is thrilling. Uh, the second group of words that come to, group to mind is uh, a great deal of work. This is a busy place, and it needs to be. I mean, you come up here, you need to be ready to work, and there's a great deal that we're trying to accomplish. And so that means pretty much sun up to sundown as it would be on Earth, anyway, though we get 16 of them here, that it's continual work almost all day, every day. And it, like I said, it needs to be that way because there's so much that we're trying to accomplish. So you got to come up here with a, an eager, energetic attitude and uh, keep the fire burning because uh, it's, it's pretty busy, like I said, and it should be. Okay, well, let me thank both of you and wish you both uh, the best of luck as you uh, pursue the rest of your uh, cable hookups. Thank you very much. Super. Thank you, Mark. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Aviation Week and Space Technology portion of the event.